My neighbor threw out a broken microwave and I grabbed it for the transformer because the newer ones don't have those anymore. And I disassemble it with the kids. They always enjoy seeing the insides of something and how it works. But sorting away the reusable bits from it, I noticed one of the micro switches was completely burned out. And I was wondering, is that how it failed? Fortunately, I kept the transformer and magnetron and condenser all wired together the way it was. So I should be able to try this out again. Fortunately, I hadn't thrown the other bits away yet, so I still have the box and the door and all that stuff. So I'm just screwing the magnetron back into the waveguide that injects the microwaves in the box, and then we can try it out. So I think this thing needs to connect to ground. That's where it used to be connected. And the microwave oven transformer has got one end of a winding connected to the frame, so I gotta make sure that's connected to ground. And I got myself a power cord with clips on the end, so I'll use that to power up the primary winding of the transformer. And now some light bulbs in here, so I can tell if it's actually microwave. And I think it would be wise to close the door on it. Alright, time to plug it in. Cool, I think it still works. These were all burnt out light bulbs by the way, so I didn't waste anything. So I can't let this run too long because the magnetron without a cooling fan on it gets quite warm. For short periods like this it's okay and there's no point in trying to put this whole thing back together because the electronics on it, we broke those all and besides it's a big clunky sort of thing. Normally there's a rotating platter to even out the uh, microwaves. This doesn't have this anymore so I want to see how uneven it is so I'll dampen this piece of cardboard and microwave it to see how unevenly it gets warm. So we have quite the interesting pattern of hot spots and cool spots. This right here is a really hot spot whereas this here and here is actually quite cool so quite the interesting standing wave patterns inside that box with just the cardboard inside. And these inconsistencies are because the microwaves bouncing around inside that box form sort of a standing wave pattern. So imagine if I send one wave down the slinky, it doesn't seem too inconsistent, but if I send a constant wave down the slinky, you can see we uh, end up building up a uh, standing wave pattern. And right here it moves hardly at all, so very little power, so to say, and here we have a lot of power. And the same sort of thing happens with the microwaves bouncing around inside the box, except it's in three dimensions, so the patterns are much more complicated. So I was curious about some of the voltages and such in here, but I know it's thousands of volts, so not safe to touch with a probe. So instead of putting 120 volts in here, I'm just going to use this little power supply to send 12 volts AC in there, and then I should have about a tenth of the voltage on everything. So I got 12.6 volts on the transformer. And the transformer output here, I'm getting 230 volts coming out of the transformer, so clearly at full voltage it's going to be a lot more. And then for the uh, magnetron filament winding, I'm only getting 0.4 volts. So that'll probably be about 4 volts when it's running fully. And this is a diode rectifier and that helps that capacitor charge up. And let's see, and the capacitor right now has got uh, 311 volts on it, so that would be about 10 times more when it's microwaving. So I traced out the schematic for this whole thing, and this is the secondary winding. It's 2165 volts RMS if this is 120 volts. That's under idle. Peak voltage will be about 1.4 times higher. Um, when this side goes positive as part of the AC cycle, this diode conducts, which means this cap or condenser gets charged up to 2970 volts. And then when this side goes negative, we've got the negative from here plus the 2970 volts negative from here, which means this side here goes really negative, close to about 6 kilovolts. And that connects to the cathode, which also connects to just a very short winding in the transformer. And basically we get uh, close to 6000 volts across here under no load. I think under load it's probably something like 4 kilovolts. And of course this magnetron is what makes the microwaves. So the uh, business end of the schematic for these old style microwaves is pretty easy to understand. Not like the newer inverter ones which are just way more complicated and not suitable for dangerous experiments. Whereas these microwave oven transformers like this 
People make welders and all kinds of stuff out of them, all kinds of dangerous stuff. Now for the sake of YouTube views, I should think of stupid and dangerous things to put inside this uh, wreck of a microwave, but uh, that's been done before. So I was thinking, why should I limit myself to microwaves inside the box? I should let the microwaves be free. So I could just try operating the magnetron without any enclosure, but I think this little bit here, this waveguide, is probably going to help concentrate the microwaves. So I'll cut this out and try it outside the box. Got this wired up now with the magnetron bolted to the waveguide. And I bent this a little bit to maybe direct the microwaves a bit, uh, plus a blower to help keep the magnetron cool. I want to see where my liberated microwaves go, so I'm aiming at this wetted cardboard. Got a fan here, and a long cord for plugging it in, because I'd rather not be too close while this activates. So I'll just let that run for a few seconds, and then I'll measure it. So it seems I have a hot spot right about here, but it's not super wide, so the microwaves coming out of here seem to be fairly directional. I thought they'd spread all over the place, but uh, this is pretty good. I'm wondering what these liberated microwaves will do to the Wi-Fi. So I've got uh, my setup here, and a Raspberry Pi computer up here on Wi-Fi, and I'm pinging it from this one here. Let's turn the microwaves on. That should be active by now. And this is still working, surprisingly, although I think the, uh, yeah, the ping times are going up a little bit. I waited until my wife was done with her work for the day before trying these liberated microwave experiments, but I guess that wasn't even necessary. This time aiming the microwaves directly at the Raspberry Pi computer up there. Let's see what that will do to the signal. Still works, it's amazing. Ping times have gone up uh, quite a bit though. So I guess these liberated microwaves at a distance might not be as strong as I thought they would be. Next experiment, liberated microwaves cooking a raw egg. There it goes. So eggs in a microwave oven tend to explode and so did this one, although I think it is pretty cooked. Next, boiling some water. I wonder if that'll go super critical before it boils. And another test, scrambled egg in a glass. Well, I've accidentally had eggs blow up rather spectacularly on me in the microwave. So uh, this is interesting, but rather disappointing. The next logical thing to try would be to boil some water in a lidded glass container to see how that blows up. But then it'd have glass shrapnel everywhere, so that's something I should have tried before I cut that microwave apart.